Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Audio Architects. This is episode two of Quest for the Best Subwoofer Edition. And in this episode, I'm going to be reviewing the SB2000 Pro from our friends at SVS. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mike with Audio Architects, and we're going to be looking into the SVS SB2000 Pro today. Now, if you enjoy the content, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to get notified every time I put out new content. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the SB2000 Pro from SVS, and this thing is not only gorgeous, but it also looks like it can hit pretty hard. So in the next few clips, you're gonna see not only the unboxing, but also a sound test, a measurement, and an overall review of what I thought of the subwoofer itself, and of course, what it can do for you. Okay. Seems like it's the instructions and, you know, a kind of a sales pamphlet to show you more products, pretty cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. This might be a first for me. There's no box inside a box. Power cable up on front. On top, I guess. Not front, top. Okay, got a nice healthy piece of foam. Okay, so as you may all be able to see, I'll kind of tilt it forward so you guys can see it even better. So as you can see, they packaged it with the subwoofer and the grill seems to be packaged pretty well. Normally, like I said, I'm used to a box inside a box, but this one came, came pretty well, well taken care of. So let's go ahead and get it out. Got the nice branded SVS grill. Okay, aside from that, there's nothing else in the box other than the subwoofer itself. Let's go ahead and take it out. All right, guys, here is the subwoofer. Let's go ahead and unveil it for you. Okay, and of course, beautiful nylon baggie. Can't, can't have a speaker without one, apparently. Okay, one, two. Wow, nice. Piano black finish. Uh, let's, do a little, let's do a little walk around here. Ooh, pretty. I almost feel bad for touching it. So, beautiful looking driver, sealed enclosure, uh, very compact. For a 12 inch subwoofer, this is extremely nice and compact, very lightweight. So, for someone, you know, pressed on space, this might be super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and flip it around for you. It's got some little rubber feet on the bottom, so if you have, you know, hardwood floors or anything like that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, super small plate amp, super small. It's got some controls in the back that we'll go over here later, and it's got your regular LFE inputs. It's got some outputs, it's got some power button, it's got Bluetooth. So we're, we're gonna discuss all the cool features that this, this bad boy has here in a second, but uh, overall, nice clean design. Uh, I like it, pretty cool, right on. The SVS 2000 Pro models replaced the most popular SVS subwoofers of all time, representing a massive performance upgrade over the original 2000 series, featuring completely redesigned 12-inch SVS drivers, which deliver massive low-frequency output with absolute accuracy and transient speed an aluminum vented cone with exceptional stiffness to mass ratio and a proprietary injection molded extreme excursion surround ensure flawless pistonic motion for pinpoint control and accuracy. For those wondering what pistonic truly means, pistonic refers to the motion of the driver cone in response to the audio signal from the driver's voice coil. If the driver cone stays rigid and moves in and out in a truly pistonic fashion, distortion is avoided and the purest replica possible of the signal from the amplifier is produced by the speaker. The driver has a dual ferrite motor assembly weighing over 15 pounds, generating massive amounts of magnetics to produce extreme driver excursion without losing control, effortlessly achieving extension below 20 hertz without 
without distortion, which we will see how the levels measure in the upcoming REW segment. It has a lightweight and rigid aluminum vented cone with composite fiber dust cap creating room energizing SPLs while maintaining control even at the highest drive levels. With a long throw parabolic surround using proprietary injection molding allowing extreme excursion for bass you can feel while preserving drive unit longevity. The aluminum pole piece extension improves thermal magnetic properties for exceptional heat dissipation and the dual layer voice coil design maximizes linearity and accuracy at full excursion while minimizing distortion and power compression. On the back of the sub, the plate amp is conservatively rated at 550 watts with over 1500 watts of peak power. The Sledge STA 550D amplifier maximizes the full potential of the 12 inch driver with effortless power and precise control. The innovative design combines the efficiency of a Class D amplifier with the ability to move colossal amounts of current through the fully discrete MOSFETs for outstanding real-world subwoofer performance at all drive levels in any room. The sophisticated 50 MHz high-resolution analog device audio DSP is the most advanced digital processor ever used in a subwoofer and maintains pinpoint accuracy and pristine quality through advanced in-room tuning and powerful DSP control. Frequency response curves optimized specifically for the SB2000 Pro allow the subwoofer to take control of a room and completely pressurize it with crisp, heart-pounding bass. The 2000 Pro Series subwoofer app is the most convenient way to control volume, access multiple DSP functions, and program custom presets for one-touch tuning, optimized for music, movies, gaming, and a lot more. The SVS subwoofer app also allows advanced customization so you can name your subwoofer for easy preset switching choose the subwoofer standby mode, and reset the subwoofer to factory settings. Bluetooth connectivity allows full control, even when the subwoofer is out of sight and bi-directional feedback shows adjustments in real time on both the app and rear panel subwoofer interface. I tried the app personally and it worked very well and connected seamlessly. However, I am kind of old school, so I preferred to use the back panel for my adjustments. I don't know, I kind of thought it was cool, it didn't have any knobs, so I just pushed a few buttons, set my controls, and away I went with some awesome bass. So following ahead, we're going to be doing the REW measurement, as well as listening to a quick little sound test, and then we're going to be talking with Nick, directly from SVS, who is going to give us a little bit of a breakdown about the subwoofer, and about what SVS has going on. So stay tuned. As you can see with the REW graph, this is an absolutely beautiful measurement. It falls off really nice at about 18 hertz. There's a small room null at about 34 hertz, and that has been a consistent room null in my measurements, so that has nothing to do with the speaker. It has a bit of punch around 66, 67 hertz, which is nice because it means it does get a little loud around that area, and it has a nice gradual fall off at about 120 to 130 hertz. Overall, this is a really, really good looking REW, and SBS should be very proud of the engineering they did with the SB2000 Pro. So since science gives it the two thumbs up, let's go listen to it and see what we think. Alright guys, so I brought in Nick Brown, the Vice President of Marketing for SVS, and I am so happy and honored he came on the show. 
What's going on, Nick? It's great to be here, Mike. I mean, you guys are doing awesome stuff on uh, YouTube, and it's just a real pleasure. And uh, I know you've had some uh, early experiences with SVS here, so I'm excited to know what your thoughts, but uh, just really uh, enjoy being here. Yeah, I really enjoyed our podcast that we did uh, probably now a couple months ago, uh, and I've been dying to talk to you again. Um, and I've, you know, I think we've passed each other a couple times online, and then uh, you're definitely doing an awesome job with the uh, happy hour that you guys do, the SVS happy hour. So anybody that tunes in, uh, it's on Thursdays, right? Uh, it's every other Thursday. So, uh, you know, twice a month, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do it 6 p.m. Eastern to 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I mean, I know people will be watching this video for a while, but our next one will be uh, August 20th. And we're actually really psyched to have uh, Sandy Gross, who's the uh, founder, one of the founders of Polk and Def Tech and Golden oh, Year. Wow. Um, so we'd like to have cool guests on and, uh, you know, we're doing real live events before you know the whole pandemic thing kicked in and so this is our way to stay connected with people and uh, we know some people are struggling so we give away products and, and just try to bring some light and some shine to the industry and uh, i think it's been working well so far yeah I, I definitely noticed that and i think that's awesome that you guys give stuff away and you have fun and you're still engaging with your audience you know which svs let's be honest it's um it's not only the cool brand to own it also sounds really good so the whole purpose of of this video was to bring to light the sb2000 pro as well as explain to the um to to the general audience that, that's watching this why uh, a sealed subwoofer is beneficial to them so i went on a whole tangent on uh on sealed subwoofers already so i think the main advantage of the sb2000 pro is its size uh, it's 15 by 15 by 15. So you could literally put that anywhere in, in your space, right? Like, mean, what, what are you thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the 2000 Pro series actually replaced our 2000 series, and those were our most popular models of all time. And I think part of that is because it has that sort of compact form factor. So mm-hmm. it gets, you know, easy placement in, in a variety of different rooms, but it still has some serious thump to it. You know, it's uh, it's got a 12 inch driver. So, you know, you're moving a lot of air there. It's got a powerful amplifier. And, and we were able to add the app control to the 2000 Pro at the, the lowest price of, uh, of all of our subwoofers. So, you know, it really appeals to sort of a, uh, a broad subwoofer demographic i guess you could say because it has that compact form factor that'll fit in a lot of rooms it has the accept the spousal acceptance factor mm-hmm. but it also still drops some serious bass which you know i think people who love subwoofers can certainly appreciate well um something that uh, kind of an obstacle i came across when i first opened it up was i i plugged it all in i was ready i was ready for some svs type bass because this is the first svs sub i have ever uh came in contact with um, which is strange because you would have thought, you know, by now <laughs> I would have I would have let, heard your subs before, but um, I I was expecting some spectacular bass, and I was totally let down. I was totally underwhelmed. I'm like, this does not sound good, and <laughs> of course, uh, later come to find out it was user error because on the back panel, the coolest thing I think one of the coolest things about the technology of the SB2000 Pro is the fact that you did away with knobs. You know, most most, you know, back panel uh, amps have knobs. These have just buttons, electronic buttons that you push. And with those buttons, you can control your phase. You can control your crossover. You can control your volume. And unfortunately, you know, (laughs) I'm I'm a dummy and I was pushing volume. I'm sorry. I was pushing crossover instead of volume. So I had this thing crossed over all the way at like 140, 120, 140. I don't even know where it was. It was it was high. And that is why it did not sound I bet you had some great mid bass though, right? Oh, it, it was punchy. It was punchy for sure. But, uh, you know, I, <laughs> once I figured that out and I tuned it the way I actually, there's an auto, there's an auto crossover on there where it kind of gets you right around that, uh, 60 to 90 air, or no, I'm sorry, um, 70 to 90 area. And it sounded fantastic. The bass is low. The flex was amazing. It, uh, it filled the room, you know, and it, but it, it still had that tightness, of a sealed subwoofer, but it definitely had um, some loudness to it. You know, you know how sealed subwoofers sometimes are, you know, a little quieter, a little tighter, but this had some really nice, vibrant bass. I was really impressed. 
Well, I will say, Mike, you are not alone in your, uh, you know, the issue you have there. We've had people call up our support team, like screaming and irate, like I dropped 700 bucks on this thing. Where's the base? Where's the base? And it's like, well, let's walk you through some settings and they'll find out, you know, like you had the crossover setting way too high mm -hmm. and they make one single adjustment. And it's like, oh, I hear it now. And they kind of get it. So that's not uncommon at all. And it's kind of funny because I think a lot of people have this notion that like a subwoofer is, you know, set it and forget it. You just connect it and like the bass comes. But there's some nuance, you know, it, depending on the speakers you have, depending on your room, there's adjustments that you can make. And, and I think the app helps with some of that, but even the, the basic crossover, you know, what your speakers are, like that has a huge effect on what your output's gonna be at various frequencies. So, you know, to get that right is a huge part of dialing in your subwoofer. Um, so I think, you know, uh, it, it's a common issue. And so you shouldn't feel bad about that at all but i'm glad you did get it resolved because uh you wouldn't want you to think it's anything less than what it really is oh, yeah i was well i i knew there was either something wrong with the sub or there was something wrong with me um because i know that's that not the type of i know this can't be one of the best selling subwoofers that you guys offer and it sounded like that you know like i'm like there's mm -hmm. that that just doesn't make any sense so i'm glad that got resolved and and it did definitely impress me um do, would you feel like what would who would be the perfect uh consumer for this particular sub because obviously you have a huge array of offerings you have ported you have sealed you have a high end I, I, would this be kind of like your entry level uh into the svs ecosystem type of subwoofer so we do have uh, more to, more affordable series, the 1000 series. So I mean, technically that would be the entry level. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think I mentioned before the 2000 series are our most popular models because they're, okay. you know, they're a step above the 1000 series, which are great, um, but they give you a little bit more output, a little bit more low frequency extension. And currently now with the pro series, you get the app control, you get the, uh, the better amplifier, which has got fully discrete MOSFET output, which just gets you tons and tons of current into that driver. So you can hit those peak sort of, uh, you know, moments of uh, an action movie or a bass drop in EDM, those kind of things. It really delivers um, more so than our old Apple amplifier uh, platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things we've really tried to do is narrow the delta of performance between a ported and a sealed subwoofer. You know, I think for a long time there was this notion, okay, you get sealed if you're an audiophile and you're going to do mostly music listening, you get ported. If you're a home theater fan and you want to get those like massive output and, you know, sort of chest thumping uh, bass uh, when you get in the moment calls for it. And so we really wanted to sort of narrow that and uh you know with subwoofers in general there's this sort of tractor pull mentality and it's like you know a lot of people just value the output and the low frequency extension over everything else and that's all that matters and we certainly put those as one in one a but you have to look at accuracy you have to look at transient uh, sorry transient response and you have to look at how well it blends with speakers and i think with both models it does that phenomenally well and like I said, some of those improvements we've made over our prior amplifier platform, as well as some tweaks we made to the driver, really put them head and shoulders above our original 2000 series. So I think, you know, those being our most popular models previously, and now, you know, upgrading those to the extent that we did, it was an easy sort of pathway for us. And, and as far as the launch went, you know, we did more with the 2000 Pro Series than we've done with any of our others, including the 16 Ultra. Uh, I think because of that, um, you know, the price as well as uh, it replacing our most popular models and just people wanting to see how much of an improvement it actually was. Sure. And and now you're kind of stepping into the amplifier and um, like, a, like component speaker games. So you, you got towers, you got, you know, uh, the amplifier to power it. Like, how do you how do you feel that's going? Uh, do you do you think that, that that's something you guys are going to expand upon, or do you feel you want to kind of just stick to that type of um, setup? Well, we are always uh, talking as a team with our engineers about what the next thing is going to be in audio, and so we have our Prime Wireless, which is uh, you know works off the DTS Play Five platform, which is multi-room wireless audio. Um, so that's sort of our more future-facing product. But we're absolutely committed to being a full on audio brand and and when you look at you know our total product array our accessories uh, which includes our like you know sound path isolation system little feet for a subwoofer that you know help decrease bass bleed our wireless adapter our cables that's actually the fastest growing part of our business right now which is mm. shocking to all of us like none of us expected that and then speakers are our second fastest growing and i think because we've been in the subwoofer game so long it's harder to have that grow as quickly but um you know certainly we haven't 
slouched at all in terms of what we're bringing to the subwoofer game. But uh, as I said, we're very committed to being a full-on audio brand. We don't want to be known as, you know, SVS. Oh, they're the subwoofer guys. That's not who we are anymore. We okay. want to be somebody who's delivering that same, like, thrilling and immersive audio experience, um, but also having, like, unrivaled performance for the price. Um, and I sort of double sort of attack that we have with, uh, you know, accessories, wireless audio, speakers, subwoofers. And so, you know, we're committed to, uh, to all aspects of uh, immersive audio experiences at this point. Dude, that's awesome. I'm really excited to see, you know, what comes next. Do you have anything uh, in the oven right now that you're you're willing to talk about or that you can talk about? So we don't divulge product development plans, but I know uh, Gary, our president, has already uh, let the uh, cat out of the bag with one of our things. Um, you may know of the Cedia show. It's a big uh, trade sure. show that typically uh, it revolves around custom installers, people who install technology, you know, home theaters for a living. Sure. And, you know, the trade show got canceled this year, but one of our big launches for that was going to be an in-wall subway. So that is oh, wow. uh, coming quickly and soon before the end of the year we will have our first ever architectural subwoofer uh, that will be available uh, most likely through our dealer base um, you know not necessarily for DIY but if the demand is there you know and people want to try it uh, we may offer some uh, some videos and some instructions on how to do it yourself we're going to launch it with our dealers first and uh, and see how that goes but you know really we're again trying to turn the auto war audio world in its ear the best possible in-wall subwoofer of all time. And we're not going to stop there. There's going to be another product launch before the end of the year. But uh, I like my job and I want to keep it. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll keep my lips sealed on that for now. But I will say, I do have this mystery product in my house right now, taking uh -oh. some pictures and trying to get some uh, sizzle going before we actually launch it uh, You know, sometime in late fall. Well, ho hopefully you'll keep uh, you keep myself and um, Giles in mind when, when it's time to do a review on it because I would love to get my hands on it first <laughs> well, i would be more than happy to we're gonna we're gonna roll it out it's gonna be it's gonna have mass appeal so i can tell you that much um you know and i can tell you it's not gonna be a 32 inch driver on a subwoofer which i know a lot of people it's kind of funny the thing that we get asked to design the most is like the biggest subwoofer of all time and sure. it's like you know from a business perspective like okay we might sell five of those in a year and we'll be you know the darlings of the like ultimate base experience <laughs> but you know there's not a lot of mass appeal there so we're trying to you know walk both ways uh so it will not eclipse the 16 ultra in terms of uh output and uh and size but it'll be pretty damn cool if, uh, if i say so myself so be on the lookout for that awesome well overall like i said i really enjoyed the sp2000 pro i thought it had some amazing sound um, I, I really don't think it really had any limitations. You know, normally I try to uh, have a well-rounded opinion about uh, any product I review. However, you know, I, I took it to higher levels, didn't distort, you know, didn't flap, didn't do anything weird. Uh, it just it just kept hitting and it hit hard. So um, thank you. Thank you so much, Nick, for joining me and for kind of bringing some stuff to light with SVS and i definitely look forward to working with you and, and continuing this awesome relationship we've been building uh thus far and definitely want to have you back on the show and i think you'd be perfect for a live stream here soon so i'll definitely be calling upon you for one of those <laughs> we love the live streams and uh, i appreciate the words you've uh, shared about the sb2000 pro i know you guys also uh, are looking at the, the prime wireless sound base and and, uh, and some, some tower speakers so very excited to hear what you guys think about those as well um but we're just going to keep trying to you know push the card and uh, launch new products that get people excited but uh, also bring more people into this hobby i mean that's really what we're trying to do is uh, get as many people interested in the uh, benefits of immersive audio and we're all spending a lot more time at home now so certainly mm -hmm. it's a better time than any to you know geek out on your home audio system and get it sounding as good as possible so we'll do whatever we can to drive that awesome thank you nick for joining me and uh we'll get back to the show thanks mike my pleasure man thank you so much nick for taking the time to talk to me about the sp2000 and about svs in general I really enjoyed our conversation. Let's talk a little bit about sealed enclosures. The SB2000 Pro is a sealed enclosure. The benefit here is the fact that it's so small, it could fit almost anywhere. It is a 12 inch subwoofer, but it's only 15 by 15. 
so you can literally place this speaker in most areas of your home. Sealed enclosures are generally more accurate in frequency response and better at rendering instrumentals in a convincing way. These characteristics make this type of subwoofer a natural choice for people interested in musical applications. Now, don't count them out on home theater applications because these types of subwoofers can also get pretty, pretty low. They're not gonna get as loud as the ported subwoofers. However, they do pack quite the punch. I put the SB2000 Pro to the test and it did not disappoint. Many people will describe a sealed enclosure as being a little tighter. That's because the trapped air inside of a sealed enclosure acts as sort of a spring, dampening the movement of the speaker and smoothly and consistently modulating the subwoofer's back and forth motion so that all notes get produced evenly. This of course translates into a very crisp and clean bass output. So where you guys would benefit from this type of subwoofer would obviously be the size. So a lot of people don't have a lot of space to put these massive subwoofers that people are building. So naturally buying a subwoofer that is compact but still packs a punch would be a huge benefit. And I feel that this subwoofer by SVS would definitely fit your needs if you're looking for that small compact form factor. The bass output was absolutely delicious and I really, really enjoyed the way it played my music just flawlessly. Nice tight bass. You didn't really hear any distortion whatsoever and I took it pretty loud. So I definitely recommend it. I really enjoyed it. So I really hope this helped you out in possibly making a decision and getting a subwoofer. This is only episode two so we still have three more episodes to go. The very next episode is going to be a 10 inch ported subwoofer by Klipsch. So stay tuned for that episode. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash the like, subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out a lot and ring the bell if you want to get notified every time I put out new content. Stay safe and remember, don't touch anybody.